As I mentioned earlier, I also work as a school teacher with children um, between 6 and 12. And I like to try and teach them things that they wouldn't normally learn or that they wouldn't normally do um, when being taught from their usual teachers, so to speak. So one of the things that I thought I'd speak to you about today is um, some of the ideas that you could use, whether it be as a parent or as a teacher yourself, or even for yourself, for your own inner child, um, and working with flowers. And I like to read my students one of my favourite books about flowers and fairies. It's called Isabella's Secret and it's by Jan, Jane Tanner. And Isabella's Secret tells the story of a young girl who's happily just relaxing in her garden and she notices, she hears some whispers and she comes into contact with some fairies and you can see how delicate the artworks are and um, how detailed the, um, the illustrator has drawn the pictures and has represented the beauty of nature and the fairy kingdoms. So I would read this story to them and I would have students reflecting on this story and you know you can use this story or I would use this story for children, say, between kindergarten to grade three, grade four. So she has a lot of fun with the fairies. And then this story would be used as a springboard to go into further work with nature, fairies, and flowers, and so on. And what I would do is I would ask students to reflect on the story, and maybe we might um, choose a picture in the story and see if we can see any flowers that we know, like say here for example. And then we might um, take the students outside into the school garden and see if we can find any of those flowers. And if we can, we might even turn that into an art lesson where we sit outside and we sketch some of these flowers. Or we could take some photos of these flowers. Or we could go up and we could respectfully touch these flowers. And from there, what I would do is I would get students to... With, I would get students to um, close their eyes and imagine and perceive, you know, get them to feel the energy of the flower, get them to see if they can um, communicate with any of the fairies or the elementals. Um, I would get them to draw them if, if possible. And, you know, our imagination um, is like the interpreter of our connections with um, our conscious and our unconscious mind. So going from there, after they've drawn the fairies, they've worked, interacted with the flowers, I would get them just to hold a pen or a pencil to paper, maybe even on the back of the paper once, it's, once the paint or the picture has dried and get them to um, just write down whatever comes to them. I might say to them, okay, so you've drawn your flower and you've imagined what the fairy inside the flower might look like, and I'd like you to imagine that you're getting a message from them, or I'd like you to just write the first things that come to mind. So unconsciously or to many, perhaps being unaware of it. They're making a connection with the flowers, the fairies within them, and they're also 
um, connecting with them and writing a message from them. So it adds a fun way to um, look at flowers, to look at um, the energies within them and how to work with them. And um, I mean, you could do that with children of all ages and all backgrounds and in a way I wouldn't say that it's um, I wouldn't say that it's all too um, invasive of maybe of their belief systems or their backgrounds or their practices or beliefs because it's all very fun it's all very gentle and light-hearted in the sense of reading a story going out to connect with the flowers drawing them imagining a fairy or um, the flower speaking to them and writing that down. So that's one of the ways that you can um, use flowers and work with children.